Although it is interesting and worthwhile to study the physical laws simply because they help us to understand and to use nature, one ought to stop every once in a while and think, what do they really mean? The meaning of any statement is a subject that has interested and troubled philosophers from time immemorial, and the meaning of physical laws is even more interesting because it is generally believed that these laws represent some kind of real knowledge. The meaning of knowledge is a deep problem in philosophy, and it is always important to ask, what does it mean? Richard Feynman said that. This is from his book, The Feynman Lectures on Physics. And this is a legendary book written by a legendary man. Richard Feynman was a physicist. He passed away who won the Nobel Prize. And I think he's cool. <laughs> I like his YouTube videos. There's videos on YouTube of Feynman. I'll try to leave uh, a cool one that I think is cool. Uh, I'll link it in the description of this video so you can check it out. But he's just an interesting guy to listen to. There's all kinds of stories about Feynman. People say that he used to roll around on the ground uh, whenever he was trying to, you know, think and solve problems. He was just a really supposedly strange guy. He was like this strange, crazy genius. But if you listen to him talk, he just seems like a regular person who was very good at physics and was interested in learning physics. Physics is a subject that I feel that many people who study math, including myself, have a lot of respect for people who do physics. And it's weird because at the same time, the people who do physics, I feel like they have a lot of respect for the people who study mathematics. And I think that's because people who do math know that physics is hard. And people who do physics know that math is hard. And so I got an email the other day. Um, someone was asking me if they should major in physics or in math. And they asked me, you know, which one was harder? What do you think is harder, sir, physics or math? And I, I didn't reply to the email, so I, I thought I'd make this video and talk a little bit about physics. So my experience with physics was very hard, a very, very brutal experience. Um, physics was a killer for me. I, I studied physics in college. I took three courses in physics. And when I took physics, I didn't know any calculus at all, at all. No calculus, and I think I've said this before, but I have a, a mental image of my professor standing up there on the board, writing down an integral symbol, and there was a K inside the integral, and he says, and we pull out the constant K. And I just, I remember thinking, pull out, constant, K? What is that weird symbol? What is an integral? I didn't know anything about calculus. And he's pulling constants out of integrals. I couldn't even solve basic algebraic equations. And so the whole time I struggled and it felt like I was not going to make it, but I made it, right? I made it. I got to be, I got to be the teacher in that class. He would sign a dollar bill and he would give it to the person who had the top score and everyone would clap. Congratulations, Albert. Congratulations, Cynthia, whatever. Whoever got the dollar, everyone clapped for them and they got the signed dollar bill. All my friends got the dollar, all of them. We had like a little group of friends. They all got the dollar. I never got the dollar, never. And I tried in physics one and physics two, didn't get A's, I got B's. I think I got a B plus in one of them. Fast forward to physics three, which is, which is modern physics. You talk about relativity and time dilation. I thought that was really, really cool. In that class, I got an A and I did, and I did much better. So which is harder? Well, obviously, as a person who studied mathematics for several years, I'm gonna say, I think physics is harder because I know more math than physics. But if you're a person who studies physics, you're gonna say, well, you're gonna say math is harder because maybe you know more physics than math. Typically, when you don't understand something, uh, when, you, when you don't know a lot of it, when, you, when you're not like a master in a subject, you're gonna think it's more challenging because you don't know it. So there's a lot of physics that I don't know, right? Because I never studied it. Just like a person who studies physics might have a hard time you know, writing proofs. So to answer that email um, from that person, you know, should you study physics or math? I think it's gonna come down to which one do you enjoy the most? You know, which one do you enjoy the most? Um, I think that's really what it comes down to. I had an email from someone that um, I used to know, I guess I still know him, and you know, he's starting his uh, 
physics PhD program. I won't name him. He's probably watching this video. Don't worry. <laughs> I won't reveal your name if you are watching. And this guy's awesome. He just, he's, a, he's a person that, that loves physics. So someone like him, I think, is a person who should study physics. If, if you love math, I think you should study math. A lot of times people want to study something and they don't study it because they think that the prospects for you know future employment aren't there and that's that's okay but at the same time you have to ask yourself you know is that the future employment that you want to do so if, if you're going into let's just say engineering do you really want to be an engineer uh, so likewise if you're going into physics are you going to be okay teaching is that something you want to do so those are questions you have to ask yourself i think before deciding on on one or the other but anyways physics is it harder than math? I mean, I think it's hard. I know more math than physics, so for me, physics is harder than math. For me personally, I think physics is way more challenging. This book, people say it's not for beginners. I've read small portions of this book, and I think it has a very interesting tone. It has almost like a conversational tone. Um, just the way, the way it's written is a little bit different than a lot of other books. It's not meant to be a beginner book. I'm pretty sure this is meant to be like a book for like you know good students people who already know some math and you know the really motivated honors type level stuff but i think it reads perfectly and i love this book i don't know how available this is i'm pretty sure that i'm pr i'm sure they have like boxed sets of the entire series on amazon so i'll try to leave uh, some links in the description in case you want to check it out smells good this one the copyright is from let's check the copyright in this 1963 there it is this is the second printing 1964 and there's the legend there's richard Feynman. genius genius i have a lot of the math books that Feynman used to learn calculus so Feynman was an exceptional math student um he taught himself calculus he there's one book in particular it's called calculus for the practical man i have it it's right over there you can't see it because it's off the camera but it's it's right over there and it's you know what let me just go get it i'm back and i've time traveled which is possible or impossible according to physics i guess it's yet to be discovered um so calculus for the practical man by thompson so this is a book that one of the books that richard feynman used this one has answers to every single problem in the back of the book which is super awesome. So I'll leave a link in the description to this one in case you want to check it out. Yeah, and this one is widely available. Um, you should be able to get a copy. It's part of the uh, Mathematics for Self-Study series, D. Van Nostrum Company, Inc. This is an older version. I don't know how accessible or, uh, the older versions are, but they have newer versions. It's been reprinted uh, because it's so famous. And they have different ones. The, they also have Arithmetic, for the practical man, algebra for the practical man, geometry, trigonometry, and then this one obviously is calculus. A group of books that make easy the home study of the working of principles of mathematics. <laughs> yes, I can imagine a young Richard Feynman, uh, you know, reading through this wonderful little book. It's a pretty good book. Um, it's one of the earliest books where, you know, the book was designed for self-study, you know, a, a lot of the older books on math are are very hard to read. So this is one that Feynman did use uh, to learn. Not not this exact copy. I wish it was, and I wish it was signed by him, but it's not. And this copy isn't even signed. Anyways, a random video on physics. Uh, Richard Feynman, uh, legendary mathematician. I I'll leave a link to a, a video from Feynman in the description of this video in case you want to check it out, so you can hear him talk. Um, he's a real life genius, right? So, you know, people say, what's a genius? Well, it depends on your definition, but Feynman, you know, he won the Nobel prize, the real deal, the Feynman lectures on physics. Oh, if you want to learn mathematics, not physics, I don't have any physics courses yet. Um, I do have courses on my website, check them out, mathsorcerer.com. Uh, the courses are actually on Udemy, but uh, if you go, if you want my courses, please use my links because I've lowered the prices and you should get the lowest price, I think. Also, if you use my links, um, other, you know, it helps me. Otherwise, Udemy takes a, a big cut, mathsorcerer.com. And if you're not a subscriber uh, and you wanna subscribe, consider hitting subscribe today. Until next time, keep doing math and physics. Take care.